Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. Welcome to another video in my beginner Ableton course series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the different audio effect types in Ableton, some MIDI effects, as well as understanding the signal flow inside of Ableton, how audio gets from MIDI to instrument to audio effect, etc. If you guys haven't already grabbed my free sample pack, make sure to do so in the description video. But without further ado, let's just get right into it. So the first thing I actually want to look at are some important more vital effects inside of Ableton before even going over the different effect types. The first is the auto filter here and the auto filter allows you to sculpt the different frequencies of a sound and how it works in its most basic form is you have a filter cutoff and everything around that cutoff will be filtered based on the filter type here. So this is a low pass filter which means all the lows will come through everything below the cutoff will come through and all the highs will get cut out also known as a high cut filter the next is a high pass filter which does the opposite the highs get through you may recognize that as kind of a common dj effect the next is a band pass where you only hear the frequencies in this band Next is a notch where you actually don't hear the frequencies around the cutoff. And lastly is a cool one Ableton has known as a morph filter, which allows you to morph between different types. So this is a really fun tool to sculpt the frequencies of your sound. The next one that you're going to hear about very commonly is known as a compressor. And a compressor allows you to affect the dynamics of a sound. It's a dynamic processing tool. It allows you to compress the dynamics of sound. Now the dynamics of a sound is the range from its lowest volume to its highest volume. The more dynamic a sound is, the more of a range it has, and the less dynamic it is, the less of a range it has. So you'll see that this sound right now isn't very dynamic. So let's drag a more dynamic sound in here. And actually these percussion, one after another, that's quite dynamic. I'll actually just take these two and I'll duplicate them across. And you'll see that's quite dynamic. So what you can do is compress that volume range. Now I'm going to turn makeup off because it's actually going to add volume back into the sound. I don't want to do that. And I'm going to drag down what's known as the threshold. Now as the sound crosses this volume threshold, it will do what's known as gain reduction and it will reduce the gain. Now, how intensely it reduces the volume is based off this ratio. Higher ratios, the more it reduces it. Now, how fast it reacts is based off this attack. The quicker, the quicker it reacts. The slower the attack, notice how some volume still sneaks through? That's the compressor not working quick enough. And the release is how quick after it goes below the threshold does it stop compressing now on this device you have some other important things the next is a dry wet and what this is and you're gonna see this all across Ableton so remember this if you lock anything in your brain from this video it's the dry wet this allows you to blend between the unaffected signal and the affected signal now this may not be as obvious with something like a compressor but if I were to take something like a reverb, a reverb being a plugin we'll go into in just a second, this is an echo effect. And the more dry wet there is, the more echo you have. No dry wet, no echo. And in the middle, you have a blend. So that's going to be on this tool, as well as you may have seen actually an on off toggle right here. That's going to be really handy. Again, this is kind of a crash course on all the audio effects in Ableton. I'm going to be going into more depth on them later. So that's the compressor. The next tool you're going to be hearing about and seeing quite often and being told to use is an EQ. And an EQ allows you to sculpt the frequency of your sound based off of these filters here. Now you can see our sound right here. That's the spectrum of the sound from its low frequencies on the left to its highest frequencies on the right. 
then you can introduce filters, kind of like the auto filter we had before, that can sculpt that sound. The first type is a bell, which allows you to boost or reduce frequencies. Now you pick the frequency here and how much it's being turned down here. Then you can choose how narrow this amount that it turns down is with this Q. That's almost unnoticeable. And that's a big amount of frequencies being ducked a whole 15 decibels. The lowest point being 212 right in the middle. Now you can pick from different filter types. We have similar to our other filter, a high pass and another high pass that's not quite as steep. A low pass and a low pass that's not quite as steep. You have a notch, which actually completely removes the frequencies. See how our volume option is actually taken away. And then you have shelves. And what shelves will do is it'll turn up and down every point, either to the right of the cutoff or to the left. So this is a way of doing bigger, more drastic changes with your EQ. Now, in terms of two other go-to effects, I'm just going to briefly cover these because I'll go into more detail in a minute. There's a simple delay, which is a fun sort of delaying effect. See how it kept playing afterwards? So how it works is you have a dry wet, which I'm going to keep in the middle. Feedback, which is how long it's going to keep echoing. So with when, it lo when it's low like this and I press stop, didn't last that long. With this being longer, no, notice how it did it for a while. And then you can pick the different rhythms for the different ears. So that's a fun little echoing effect called simple delay. And the next one that I'd call a go-to effect is reverb. And reverb is that echo effect we were talking about. But it's not like a bouncing echo effect like the simple delay. It's more like it emulates a room. So you have the two most important knobs I recommend playing with are just the dry wet, the amount of it, and the decay time. Everything else is for a later tutorial because reverb is pretty complicated. Don't forget though, with all these effects, you do have presets. So if you don't know what to do, you can test out different presets to see what fits your sound most. So now let's go into the different audio effect types. Starting from the top with amp, amp is a distortion. In distortions, you probably think of like a guitar distortion most commonly. Well, that's actually what amp is, but distortion, in my opinion, is actually just more of a type of effect that adds frequencies, but typically in a way that you think of like guitar distortion or something like that. So you have an amp where you can pick from different types of distortion. pretty useful. You have dynamic tube, which is a type of distortion, where you pick different types and add input drive to distort it. Useful as well. You have erosion, which is kind of a more unique one, where you draw on this XY grid to create distortion type effects. I'll consider it a distortion. The next is overdrive, which you hear is quite crunchy. You have pedal, which is new to Ableton 10. Which can also get pretty intense as well. You have redux, which kind of emulates bit crushing. by reducing the bit depth of your sound, and it creates this sort of digital distortion. Then you have Saturator, which is my personal favorite because it has the most options in my opinion and can achieve some of the gnarliest sounds with enough control. And you have Vinyl Distortion, which will try and emulate vinyl. What's cool about this too is it has a crackle volume, so you can add in some vinyl crackle to your music. Really fun. The next type of effect are the frequency altering effects 
or the EQ type effects. The first is auto filter we already looked at. This can sculpt the frequencies with one cutoff and one filter type. The next is the EQ8, which we looked, which had multiple filters for multiple ways to sculpt your frequencies at one time. The next is EQ3, which is actually a simpler EQ, where you simply have volumes for the lows, mids, and highs. You set how big the high range is and the low range is here, and then everything in between these two frequency values is the mid band. So it allows you to sculpt your sound further. Now, frequency shifter is kind of a frequency altering device and without getting into detail it shifts the harmonics of your sound in an unnatural way that in a way that's different than transposing and can give you just weird harmonic shifts i wouldn't consider it at all like the other plugins but it does affect the frequencies of the sound <laughs> If we bring in our next device, Spectrum, which allows you to see the frequency spectrum of your sound, you'll see this shift happening. So it actually shifts where those frequencies are existing. And that brings us to Spectrum, which if you double click, will give you a nice view of the frequency spectrum of your sound. This is the same one that you see in the EQ. But what's nice about this is if you hover your mouse over frequency, you can see what note it is in the bottom left corner there. Pretty handy. Now that's it for the frequency affecting effects or the EQ type effects. The next I like to call the rhythmic effects, things that happen over time rhythmically. The first is auto pan and what this does is it will actually pan your sound over time. That's pretty cool. The next is beat repeat and what it will do is it will take chunks of your audio and it will actually repeat it to create these glitch effects. That one's a really fun beast. Next I'm actually going to include chorus inside of my time based effects section because chorus what it does is it actually takes your sound duplicates it by a few milliseconds, duplicates it, offsets the timing and pitch by a few milliseconds to create and emulate essentially a chorus. So the time value is quite small, but it's supposed to emulate more than one of your sound happening at a time. This one can be really fun on things like vocals and things of that nature. The next, if we're counting chorus, as a time-based effect, flanger is one as well, where it creates tiny little millisecond weird offsets in your sound that create these nice tones. Now those are a bit extreme, but you can hear that it creates kind of this weird swirling sensation, which leads us to our last one, which is phaser. And phaser does a similar thing to flanger without going into detail about the differences. It just creates offsets in the sound with by, that are so minute that it creates almost weird tones out of it. you can hear that swirling effect. So those are what I will consider in this tutorial the time-based effects. The next I want to look at are the dynamic affecting effects, things that affect the dynamic of your sound. The first is compressor, which we looked at previously, which compresses and squishes the dynamics of your sound. The next is drum bus, and this is a fun effect that's meant to put on all of your drums in a group to add a bit of distortion, add a bit of transients or remove transients, and just kind of affect the overall characteristics of your drum. It's a new one to 10, and actually personally, one of my favorite new additions to 10. The next is gate, and it almost works the opposite of a compressor, where instead of when something goes over a compressor, over the threshold, it gets turned down. What this happens is when it goes below the compressor, it turns down. This is used for removing things like white noise in a recording where there's a bit of noise when my voice stops and you kind of can hear it or things like that. So gate can be useful as well. It just kind of works differently than a compressor. 
The next is the glue compressor, which is also a compressor, but this one kind of emulates an older compressor model. And it's good for gluing your sounds together by compressing them all as a unit and giving them similar characteristics. The next is the multiband dynamics. And what this is, is a three part compressor, which will compress the high frequencies, mid frequencies, and low frequencies of your sound differently. Lastly, there is a limiter and limiter is a very aggressive compressor that will never let your sound go over a threshold. This is typically used in mastering so a sound can be squished and compressed harder to make it perceptually more loud. I know this is all a lot to take in. Again, I'm gonna do a whole other course on audio effects. I just kinda of wanna give you a sense of the different types and what options you have in your arsenal. The next type are delay effects. These are sounds that emulate different echoing types of effects. The first is, well, echo. New to Ableton 10, a fun new delay effect. The next on our list is the filter delay, which will actually take different frequency bands and delay them differently. The next is grain delay, which will take micro amounts of your sound and actually delay that. That one's really fun for sound design. The next one's the ping pong delay, which is another time-based delay. And then we have our reverb here, as well as the simple delay, which we looked at earlier, which is the simplest form, in my opinion, besides maybe the ping pong delay of all the other delay effects. And that's it for the delay effects. And now I'm just going to go through the list for any I missed because I find they don't have a bigger sort of category. We have corpus here, which is what's known as a resonator that uses the incoming audio to resonate a perceptual body or material, such as a string material or a plate material. Very unique one, pretty fun. The next is looper, which is used for live performance to actually loop your sounds as you play them. This works a bit differently than the looping you would do here and is a really big beast that I'm not gonna go into in this video. But if you're one who likes live performing, you wanna be able to loop maybe your beatboxing or whatever, that would be a really useful tool for you to know and utilize. Then you have resonator, which will actually apply notes and pitch your sound around. Kind of similar to what we were looking at with corpus, but a bit more synthetic and not trying to emulate real things that are resonating. You have tuner, which will actually tell you what note the incoming signal is. Really useful to know that it's a C, that sample is marked C, so good to know that it's working. You have utility, which is a great all around utilitarian device with everything from volume, panning, stereo width, so you can make sounds wider or less wide, and useful things even like muting and monoing the bass signal. A very useful utilitarian tool, kind of a nice little Swiss Army knife. And then lastly, you have vocoder, which is a really interesting type of effect that I don't even really know how to begin to describe that takes the dynamic properties of one sound, can mix it with the frequency properties of another sound and mesh them together. This is how Daft Punk gets sort of their keyboard vocal effect because they take the sounds of the keyboard with the filtering and mouth movement of their voice and you get this really cool hybrid sound and you do that with a vocoder. So those are all the different audio effect types. Now I quickly want to look at the different MIDI effect types. So I have an analog instrument here, and now we can look at the different effects. The first is arpeggiator, and what an arpeggiator will do is it will take your incoming MIDI data from before the audio effect. So if I play a chord, it will take that incoming data and it will play each note of the chord in sequence. 
So I'm playing three notes, holding three notes, and it's playing that in sequence. Now the way that it plays it is based off this drop down menu here. It could be random, could go up, could go down, whatever you want. The speed is based off this right here. How short or long the notes are, or with this gate here. And then you can even tell it to go more steps once it's done that sequence. So that's a really fun one for those that don't know how to arpeggiate chords themselves or don't even want to write it out. Now, if you don't even know how to make chords, the next one's a really useful one for you. This is a chord plugin, which allows you to play one note, but then stack more notes on top of it. Add an arpeggiator after that, and your one note will turn into four, will turn into an arpeggiated four. Now the problem at this point, however, is our notes aren't in key. Well, here comes the scale presets for you. I can set this to be in C minor with the scale preset. This is an effect that will pick a scale and pick a key and keep it in that. And then I'm gonna change that to E minor. So now we're in E minor. Then you have some additional tools like pitch, which will change the incoming MIDI note pitch. The velocity, which can affect the velocity of it. Random, which will give you some random options. And some other things like note length, which again, will lead, leave for later videos. This is already more than enough for one video to get you guys started with audio effects and MIDI effects in Ableton. Now, one thing though, is you did just learn the beginning part of signal flow. And signal flow is the direction of MIDI to audio to output in Ableton. And I wanna just quickly finish that statement, finish that idea before we end this video. So what you have on the left here is an incoming MIDI signal, C. That then goes into this chord plugin, becomes more notes, goes into that arpeggiator, goes into this effect, which then will hit our instrument. You can't have MIDI effects after an instrument because you need the MIDI to trigger that instrument. So it goes MIDI effects, then instrument, and then in sequence, it goes audio effects after that. If we add, say, a redux, a ping pong delay, and then a reverb. This audio puts going into the ping pong, into the redux, into that reverb. So there we go guys, that's a quick summary of most of the audio effects and MIDI effects inside of Ableton, as well as giving you the understanding of the flow of signal. I hope you got a lot out of this video. My name's Kermode. If you haven't already grabbed my Ableton sample pack, it's free, grab it in the description of this video. And if you got a lot out of this video, let me know, maybe leave a like, leave a comment, or even tell a friend, that'd really help. So thanks again guys, my name's Kermode. Peace. <laughs>